Welcome back. It's the Mailin Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Man. And to my right, the lovely co-host of the Mailin Podcast, Sally DeFreeze. Hello, Sally. I'm just reading this rundown for the first time. Oh yeah, how's it look? Good. I'm I'm like skimming it, so it may be more of a, like a okay. a raw unfiltered version of me you know you know why that's good is because this is the existential crisis episode wow. of the mail-in podcast okay every question seemed to fall into the vibe of like help i'm spiraling in some way form or fashion so what's the most existential crisis you've ever had um probably like the questioning my own mortality and the mortality of my parents after the recent string of health issues they've dealt with and mm-hmm. stuff yeah that's a good one you still but you you're still in that spiral or are you like no, kind of getting I'm, out of it i'm or? just kind of yeah i'm kind of coasting if you will okay. cruise control on the existential crisis okay throw on john Mayer, stop this train if you're if oh, you're with I do love you that know. song yeah, I, yeah it, it really makes you think how about you um i mean i have had multiple existential crises yeah crises crises yeah um i mean parenthood is comes to mind yeah that's a brand new one huh that's fun uh i struggle with anxiety mm-hmm. and a little bit a smidge of depression here and there when just, I was, just a sprinkle when i was in um grad school so yep. saw a therapist got on some meds for that <clears throat> okay um but one that i feel like is very applicable to our listeners is mm-hmm. that i feel like when i was in my mid-20s and working as a nurse and doing like three 12 hour shifts. I think I've talked about this before. I was in the period of my life where like everyone was getting married or I was going on a bachelorette party or going to a wedding or going back to Austin for the weekend. And I felt like I was literally living out a suitcase for two years straight. Mm -hmm. Like I would either be working on a weekend because I had to work like three weekend days a month. So I would probably work a weekend and then the next weekend I'd be off and I'd have to be somewhere. So I never spent time in Houston like off on a weekend, mm-hmm. just doing weekends. You're stuff. always going. And if I did, it was like balls to the wall partying because I was like actually home. Mm-hmm. And um, that just was a really tiring way to live for a long time. I felt yeah. like I literally was just skimming stuff off the top of my suitcase and like repacking it. Yep, that was uh, basically three years of New York City for me. Yeah. was just uh, like, they, they call it the city that never sleeps for a reason, Sally. It's, yeah. uh, you, can get a, you can get away from yourself a little bit in that city. I think, too, though, it's important to realize that everyone else, obviously you're saying you had that stage, too, had mm-hmm. that stage. So I was looking at my friends thinking, like, oh, everyone's so settled and, like, has weekends where they, like, do shit and I'm Craft. working or yeah. Embroider Go to Home perhaps. Depot and no one was wor- living like that. Yeah. Everyone was living the same way I was. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want to say it's like, like to call it a party phase is wrong because it's like, it's not just partying. It's like working mm-hmm. 12 hour days and right. it's like going, exhausting your credit card balance on a bachelor party schedule yeah. or bachelorette party schedule. And so it's, it's, like a party phase in the way that you're probably, you know, going out more than you would at 35 with a wife and kids. I um, mean, I spent money on the dumbest things. Yeah. I look back at that now and I'm like, I wish I would have known to like save and be responsible. But at the same time, like I kind of had to live those experiences to be the <clears throat> person and mom and wife that I am now. Yeah, well, there's a question that's coming up on the Mail In podcast today. That's basically like, what sacrifices have you made? Yeah, to do things you enjoy. And for me, it's like, well, I don't have a down payment ready to go right, right. now. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. The other, the other, cri- and I don't, I don't want to call it crises, but I, I've had like the sitting at my desk, staring through my computer, like, what am I doing in my job? Like, what, mm-hmm. what does this mean? Yeah, and then I quit and came to to wash so yeah uh that's a productive one existential crises aren't always uh, negative yeah the anxiety that comes with them usually leads to a good uh weight loss too the anxiety yeah. depression diet i call it been there i'm kidding I'm the that's opposite. not a, that's like, not a healthy I, way to do I it i gained weight oh really yeah i don't 
I eat more when oh, I oh see I am out. like oh it's dinner time I should probably have a saltine. No, I I'm the opposite. I I pick up really unhealthy habits when I'm stressed out. Like I don't work out, which would be probably the most beneficial to me. Mm-hmm. I eat like shit. I drink. Yeah. So it's like drink, every yeah. unhealthy habit that I could pick up, I do. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm when I'm like being, you know, then you pick yourself up out of that. I mean, I'm not saying that not eating is healthy either. I'm just saying. I go the opposite end of the unhealthy. So like the unhealthy spectrum, you're either like not eating or you're eating way too much. I'm the binge person. Yeah, I see. I see. I would come out, I remember coming out of like uh, a a stretch of anxiety, like a problem would be solved, right? Like whether somebody, you got good news on something or part of your anxiety is alleviated. Mm -hmm. And like for the next week, I'm just, oh my God, I'm so hungry. Yeah. And it's your body like, yeah, your body's like, yeah, you've been hungry for months, dude. But yeah. Here, ha, welcome to the real world, type of thing. Uh, yeah, that's that's my anxiety journey. Roller coaster, Sally. Yeah, it is. Anyway, should we answer some questions? Let's about do some it? questions about it. Yeah. Uh, if you want to f- uh, send in a question, uh, hit the hotline number 888 362 6245. That's 888 362 6245. Or you can write in at the link in the Twitter bio at mail in podcast please subscribe on itunes and follow on spotify as well as sending this podcast to a pal why not let's drop right in sally shall we Mm -hmm. brett and sally i am 26 and just moved to san diego from seattle shout out brett for his takes on moving and pushing me to do it shouts to you for going through with it and doing it during college and after college i always lived with my friends or had them in close proximity Everyone now seems to be making moves slash buying houses and people are living all over. We have a yearly golf trip we take, so I'm guaranteed to see everyone at least once a year. But What is your advice for keeping in contact slash dealing with the transition in life where you aren't constantly surrounded by close friends? I'm bad at this. First and foremost, I'm just going to be upfront. I'm not not good enough at this. I think I think everyone feels that way, though. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're immediately post-grad, you think like, we are never going to lose touch. We're going to be friends forever. You're going to be my lifelong friends. And then... What's that song? I was was just singing. The the graduate song. As we go on. Yeah. Uh, So, newsflash. uh, You're not going to be close to these people for forever, okay? And I don't want to bum you out. You will probably be close with some of them. Yeah. But your exact college friend group or your exact high school friend group or your exact whatever friend group is not going to exist in five or 10 years because people change. People have other shit going on. People have friends through work. People have friends like this is what I'm starting to realize Mm -hmm. being a parent is like you are friends with the people that your kid is friends with. Right. Right now I can like force Fritz to be friends with my friend's kids, but like eventually he's going to be seven and he's going to have a best friend at mm-hmm. school and I'm not going to know his parents. It's true. And then I'm going to have to like go on a play date with this kid and his parents, Drop his him or off her that, parents, whatever. At their crib. Yeah. And then I'm going to have to like make small talk with these people and possibly like go on a vacation with them. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's and if you think, think about, real quick. <laughs> but think about your own parents. Okay. Yeah. Like who were your parents friends with? It's it's were they my, best, my with their sports college? team's dad. Exactly. They yeah. weren't best friends. Some people were best friends with their college, you know, whatever. Sure. But most of my parents' friends were my friends' parents, right? Yeah, absolutely. But you know what's unique about that is do you remember like when your mom and dad got Facebook and all yeah. of a sudden in like 2015, 16, they're like found all their old friends? Yeah. I remember that was like a, a like now now my dad catches up with his old buddies. Right. Well, and it so, is so it's kind of cool. Right. And I think that is where our generation is a little bit different because yeah. social media exists. So it's easy to stay active in somebody's life even or at least when monitor you don't their, yeah. live in the same city as them. Mm-hmm. Um one thing I realized in that same phase of my 20s of like working hard playing hard traveling all over was that 
I felt like I have to be the one to like keep up with all my friends. I was like, okay, like I'm going to call her every like week and I'm going to, you know, first of all, it's not all on you. It's on your friends too, to keep up with you. Mm -hmm. Second of all, um, your good friends will be the friends that you see once a year on your golf trip and things just pick up like they never left off. Mm -hmm. So I have a girlfriend who lives in New York and um, I see her maybe once a year. Um, She like lived in Austin last summer. I didn't see her at all. Oh, wow. Because I was like postpartum and she was doing stuff and, but like, that happens. Mm-hmm. But every time I see her, we just like jump right back into it. Yeah. Like nothing, like nothing, nothing yeah. passed. And we'll randomly text, but we don't like put pressure on it. Like, oh, I haven't called her. I've got to catch up. Right. Because people just get busy with their lives. Like it's really difficult. I mean, I wish I, I was, be- I wish I was better about it. Even our own Austin friend group. Like I have a group of girlfriends that we all have been friends since college. Mm-hmm. We all live in Austin. We literally see each other once a month. Because it's someone's birthday. Like, we're going to a birthday dinner tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen any of these people since last month when we went to someone else's birthday dinner. And every time we're like, we should start a book club. We should do this. And we never, ever do it. Sure. Ever. Because people have shit going on. It's hard. It's really hard to keep up with people. I think the, you know, sort of the blunt answer to this is, what's your advice for keeping in contact? Like, be comfortable with not. Yeah. Uh, because you're going to make new friends, you're going to find new people. You're gonna, it's it's just kind of a like the cycle of life, and people like good friends are always going to be there. Right. You're you're always going to be able to respond to somebody's Instagram story, be like, oh my god, that's so cool. Like, good to see. You. Or you know what whatever it is, you're going to go on a, a bachelor party, or you're going to find somebody uh, at a golf trip, and or then then you go to weddings. And like I I had a moment two weeks ago when I was at my buddy's wedding. Where I was like, I could never see Connor again. Yeah, like there's there's a universe where if he doesn't come to Austin or I don't come to New York, like w- we're not close enough that I would go on a vacation with him right. or a buddy's golf trip. But it, like, there's a wor- there's a world where I, I don't see him again, and we're just social media friends. Right, and that was like a weird <laughs> existential moment for me. Well, my other thing is. I have two points here and I totally agree with you. It's like be comfortable with not. But the other mm-hmm. thing is also don't let the nostalgia keep you from making your own friends. You're right. Your exactly. Don't be like, hey, I need to uh, play Xbox with Jimmy and Tyler right. for the next four hours because. Or like be so sad when you yeah. see your friends in Seattle on Instagram at brunch and be like, I wish I was doing that. Like mm-hmm. We had a friend who lived in in Texas for college and then she moved back home to L.A. And it was like every time she comes back to Austin or Houston or wherever, she like gets so sad that she doesn't live here. And I'm like, but you're having your own experiences. Sure. Yeah. In L.A. And I, that was like yeah. immediately post-grad. I feel mm-hmm. like at this point she's moved on. But mm-hmm. like don't don't let yourself get so caught up in I have to be with what's going on with my friends' lives that you don't live your own life. Mm-hmm. And then number two, I I said it's a it's a two sided coin. You make the effort, your friend makes the effort. But it doesn't hurt to be, you know, if you're like have a free weekend, you're like, okay, I've got free time in June. I'm just gonna pop up to Seattle for the weekend. Sure. Yeah. Text your friend, be like, what weekend works for you? Because sometimes you just have to be that person. Right. It had and and that's Something to look forward to as right. well that you both can sort of take the the daily texting off the off the burner uh-huh. and you're both kind of putting your energy into looking forward to something two months, three months, four months down the line. We have to do that with one of Will's friends. Mm-hmm. It's like he's so busy, we're busy, and finally I texted them. I was like, "Here's the weekend we have off in June. Are y'all gonna be around? We're coming. Yeah, we're coming to see you." And the same thing when you even if you're trying to plan trips. I mean, this is why my girlfriends and I are so bad at seeing each other is because we'll be like, when's everyone available? Well, likely six people aren't all available at the same time. Right. So you just got to take the bull by the horns and be like, we're doing a golf trip. Well, it sounds like he's already got a golf trip <clears throat> plan, but like right. we're doing a trip to San Francisco. Here's the weekend. It's happening. Two of us are on board. If anybody else wants to come, great. And people will move their shit to come to you. Mm-hmm. But if you give everyone the option, like, okay, Pick out of these weekends in August and September. Everyone's going to have a reason why they can't do it. Totally. 
Totally. But if you just put the plan out there. Here's the plan. Here's what we're doing. It's it's easier once you have the type A part lined out. Yeah. So people will be flexible. We did this with the girls trip that we kept being like, we're going to do a girls trip. We're going to do a girls trip. And finally, my friend and I were like, okay, pick a weekend. We're going to Cabo. Yeah. And we sent an email out being like, we're going to Cabo. And out of the 12 people that we emailed, 11 could go. There you go. Yeah. Turns out you can move your shit if you want to go bad enough. The second part to this question is dealing with the transition where you aren't surrounded by close friends constantly. That's like the post-grad part of it mm-hmm. where I went from living with eight people to one and from going to class and then hanging out with friends on the weekends to full-time jobs. So right. for me, that is another part where it's getting comfortable with yourself. Right. And I found that I really actually enjoy that. Like mm-hmm. I, I... I Really enjoy going on a walk by myself. I really enjoy going on on a drive by myself. I obviously cooking really enjoy cooking a meal. I really enjoy going to a bar and opening my laptop by myself and like being surrounded by the din of conversation. Mm-hmm. So, get comfortable enjoying yourself. Right. You know, like I think that's and that's something whether it's you're 22 or 32, it doesn't really matter. But and that's everyone something that I is think, going through that yeah. in their 20s again. Yeah. It feels like via social media, your one friend is like always surrounded by people the mm-hmm. extrovert but like they also are having to go home and like make their own meal and watch tv by themselves with a glass of wine yeah totally so like find the things exactly like you said that like make you happy to do alone it's so much about getting to know you and like mm-hmm. what you like and what you dislike yeah that's like when you say and why you did the things you did in college <laughs> that you actually hated right date yourself before you date somebody else right. is the uh the age old adage right yeah speaking of things i enjoy how about our friends over at butcher box sally yeah it is grilling season in austin texas maybe not necessarily yesterday because it was hot as oh F. somebody had the barbecue oh fired up yesterday and that it smelled is, so good you know like the summertime that smell you're like because it oh, carries like, a little bit in the someone humidity. is barbecuing yeah. some chicken oh a little I could smoky smell they're just grilling some chicken a little charcoal yeah, oh. it was great. I almost went up to them and was like, can I have some? Can I have some of your grilled chicken, yeah. sir? Please. Please. Please spare me some chicken. Well, if he had butcher box or she, grill master or grill mistress. Mistress? I don't I was gonna say I don't think that's like the word, but yeah. Uh as long as they have butcher box, they got plenty more meat in their freezer for you, Sally. So the next time they're grilling, they gotta invite you. Yeah. Because guess what me and my boys are doing tomorrow? I won't be sharing mine, though. Oh, okay. Like, just uh, a heads up. I'm if you want to come to our cookout me. tomorrow, we're having a cookout at my apartment complex, the community pool. I have to go to that birthday dinner, but oh, maybe we'll that's tight. drink Fritz. Let's go. Let's ride. Butcher Box is making meal prep and just meals in general easy. They're a subscription service that takes the guesswork out of finding high-quality meat. They source their meat from partners with the highest standards for quality. No more searching the grocery store for 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, wild-caught seafood, and more. Their sourcing decisions are made holistically as well, keeping the farmer, the planet, and the animal in mind. So, Sally, tomorrow we're doing clams. Wow. We're doing some scallies, a.k.a. scallops. Okay. And I'm bringing out the lobster tails. Oh, well... Little grilled lobster tail. Okay. Yeah. Lobster roll. So you're, you're doing just a surf. You know what I mean? No turf. Yeah. We're just doing a surf. We're doing a seafood cookout. Okay. Get some rosé going. Get the butcher box going. Let's yeah. ride. And in a red sauce. That's the key to the clams, by the way. Uh, and, and butcher box is, is basically helping me put on the whole thing. Because I'm, jo- I'm going right into the freezer and grabbing what, uh, what came in the butcher box. Each box contains between 8 to 14 pounds of meat depending on the box you choose. And that's enough for 24 individual meals, or in Sally's case, 24 friends at her cookout Mm -hmm. that she will not be sharing with. Uh, They're packed fresh and shipped frozen for convenience so you can save time on your next grocery store trip. Customize your own box or go with one of theirs. Either way, you get exactly what you want. Guys, this is your chance to never have to shop for ground beef again. Summer's coming, burger season, taco season, Meatball season, shoot. That's right. Butcher Box is giving new members free ground beef for life. To get that deal, sign up at butcherbox.com slash mail in and get two pounds of ground beef free in every order for the life of your membership. 
Log on to butcherbox.com slash mail in to claim this deal. How about a voicemail, so? Hey, guys. Got one kind of exciting, kind of tricky, nerve-wracking. Um, what is the best way to quit a job? i uh, been with this company for about a year. Um, the corporate culture and business environment and the treatment of their employees is just not something I'm on board with anymore. I have great relationships with the people on my team and want to make an exit in the uh, kindest way possible, but uh, not really sure where to start, how to preserve the relationship to maybe parlay into uh, a recommendation or review for a future job. Um, what are your thoughts? Uh, thank you. How do you quit a job, Sally? Have you ever quit a job? I have. Okay. Um, mine was more because of other like extending circumstances, like I was moving. Okay. So it was easy to just be like, I'm moving. I'm moving, so I'm quitting. I have quit a job for, I wouldn't say these exact reasons, mm -hmm. but sort of the, like, I need, like, I, nobody's expecting me to quit this job mm -hmm. because I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, unhappy, I'm not fired, right. I'm not this, I'm not, like, I need to go quit a job that I enjoy, that I want to preserve relationships and I want to do in the correct way. Right. So there's ways to, I think there's a lot of ways to do this incorrectly. There's like the scorched earth thing, mm -hmm. which I don't think I would ever recommend. That's like the, this company sucks, LinkedIn post. I'm never like, right. I'm, I resigned. They're awful. I don't think that's ever beneficial to anybody. Right. I think, so, I mean, you tell me. Personally, I feel like um, for the first person you need to probably tell is your boss. And this is my next point is there's a delicate balance here because in my experience, a lot of like my best friends at work who were same level as me mm -hmm. and they knew before my boss knew because we had talked about it for a while and um, I had talked with, you know, at a bar or at their apartment being like, hey, I think I'm going to do this. I'm, I, I'm really going to do this. But the key is to not have them tell anybody else before right. your boss knows because your boss needs to be the first formal right. person to know or else it gets very sticky very quickly. Right. So personally, and I get needing to like tell your work best friend, kind of bounce the idea off them, et cetera. Yep. But I would make... Like you said, the boss be the first person that Has you tell. To, because if they find out before you tell them, guess what relationship is never happening again? Correct. Um, so if you need to tell somebody else before, like your work bestie, mm -hmm. I would tell them like right before you do it. Because you the, the more time that they have to like gossip and tell somebody else. Yeah. We are experiencing at my job a lot of turnover. A lot of okay. turnover. That's part of like kind of how medicine's just what's happening in yep. medicine right now. Um, and people are mostly leaving for just higher paying gigs. Shouts. Uh, what we call locums where you like you're a 1099 employee. But a lot of people are finding out before the boss finds out. And it's like leading to some really awkward it's situations. Not good. Not because good. no one can keep their mouth shut. So like. If you trust the person you're going to tell and you think that they really won't tell anybody, then you can let them know. But I would probably go to the boss first, mm -hmm. say like, hey, I'm, you know, professionally ready to move on and this is whatever. And then tell your team like almost immediately after. Yep. If your boss asks like, why are you leaving? Sure. It's okay to be honest. I would be honest. I wouldn't insult. Right. Exactly. Like I wouldn't say this person does this. I would say there's a culture here that I don't necessarily jive with because X, Y, Z. I, I wouldn't throw people under the bus on the way out. Right. I wouldn't throw a management style under the bus on right. the way out. I wouldn't throw a product or service that the company has in the way. It, like, I would just say, lead off with personal. You know, right. I want to grow and this is an opportunity to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 
you got to be careful if you have a job lined up and it's like a competitor or some same industry say there's an opportunity that I want to explore for me part of it was like I don't want to live in Manhattan anymore mm -hmm. I want to I want to slow down that part of my life right um but the biggest thing is is top down in terms of who you tell boss and then let the the gossip filter after that right and to do it respectfully so that's not insulting that's not demeaning people that's not uh you know throwing sand in the face of the company right and you know and and like you said being honest that's the that truth will set you free in a lot of situations. I do think that there is an exception to this if something like egregious has happened. If something has happened, like hey, so and so you, has groped me. Yeah, and I'm I, I, right, something. absolutely, absolutely. Out of his eyes when you said groped me. Uh, <laughs> That's that is di a different thing. But if you're just at your desk and you're like, I want to leave. Right. So again, I also think this is something that's better done in person and like has to be in person via, oh that's a great that's a great point please you do know, it in like person. don't just like send an email on friday be like putting my two weeks in like because again if you don't give a shit about the people sure do yeah. that but if you care about your relationships like mm -hmm. taking the time to talk to them in person as like nerve-wracking and terrible as that is yeah is gonna go a long way in their respect for you versus like copying out on email yes the other please thing is, do it in person I, a lot of companies, depending on how big it is, will have an HR like exit interview. Yep. And that is a time when you can like really probably say what you want. Yeah, I, that's again, fair. not like gossip, salacious stuff, but if you really feel strongly about like the company culture and your opportunities and things like that, like HR is bound, like they're supposed to not share that information. Right. And if the, if you care about the company and wanted to do well, then sharing that with them may help. If you're like, Josh is a shitty boss. I wouldn't say it like that, but I'd be like, I had a really big problem with his management style and it was difficult to like work this way. Yep. I think that stuff's fair. I wouldn't be like, hey, Josh and Ashley are hooking up right. behind everybody's back. Yeah. And uh, like that kind of stuff, I think is off limits. Right. I also so like, again, nothing salacious, but don't take the book of business with you. Like yeah. don't, Downloads those Excel files. Right. Don't download the contact list. Like that's I mean, all common stuff. Common sense stuff. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, and then I I wrote letters to like fifty plus people. Yeah. Hand handwritten notes, and it doesn't have to be that many, but like the people that made a difference in your work environment there, and and were like built you up or right. helped you advance or or really a made mentor. your days better. A mentor, right? Yeah. Do something for them that will go a long way yeah i think a handwritten note even an email is great like a personal yeah, right you can instead do that of too. sending like a edible a, arrangement yeah i but like you don't have to send a mass email out to 50 people you can think having a personalized yeah. like hey i really appreciate it when you helped me with this project looking forward to keeping in touch with you in the future so that it seems yeah. it's personal to them and they know that you care about your mm -hmm. your working relationship but the other thing i would do is some people have this luxury, some people don't, but get the process started before you're out because if you quit, there's usually not a four weeks, two weeks, six weeks severance type of thing. Right. Um, usually have like the two week trainee period, whatever right. stuff. So keep your financial situation in line Yeah. because it's, it's nice to quit and be like, oh, I have, you know, 30 grand to just sit and find my new job and, and right. fun employment type of stuff. But make sure you think about that before you are out the door yeah, or even leaving yeah, because that is, can be tricky too. Yeah. I get your shit together. Um, next one. Yeah. What's up Brett and Sally? What thing or things in your life do you make sacrifices for that bring you the most joy? Also, what else does said thing bring to the table for you? For me, it's skiing. Don't really travel or eat out a whole lot to pay for a season pass each year, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Curious what you guys have to say and shouts. I like how shouts has become like a cheers or thank you. Just shouts. Yeah, I love it. What do you make sacrifices for, Sally? I guess you and I, I mean, you said this at the beginning of the episode, probably my biggest sacrifice is like 
not buying a house in Austin in lieu yeah. of doing everything else I want to do. Guess what? That is absolutely fine. Yeah. So I mean, cool it, if I had it. to, if I had to think about, I mean, I guess I obviously grad school was a sacrifice to get to a um, <clears throat> career level that yeah. I wanted to be at that mm -hmm. I could enjoy my life. Um, and that sucked for three years. But <clears throat> in terms of like not doing stuff to mm -hmm. afford other things, I basically do what I want and we rent uh, an apartment. Yeah. And that's absolutely like I, I'm the same. I thought, you know, man, when am I going to like that, that nagging like 27 through 30 year old question, like, man, yeah. the house thing, like, what about the house thing? Yeah. I'm just like, well, you know, recently I've sort of told myself like, I, I don't, I don't care right now. Yeah. I, I really don't because it's not that I'm not investing any money at all. Like I, I get that real estate is the greatest investment in history. So everybody can come at that statement, but like, I just don't care. I, I want to live in something that I'm comfortable in. And if I, that means I can also enjoy the things I very much enjoy, which are traveling and playing golf and buying nice furniture, like, guess what? I'm happier because of what I do. Yeah. So sure. That's, that's my sacrifices. I don't have a, you know, 1200 square foot house in Manor. Like I, I'm sorry. I just don't. So I, I guess that's kind of my set. And that's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I, I mm -hmm. oh, totally get that path. And in another life, I'm sure I'm on that path. Yeah. But that's probably the biggest thing is I don't have a down payment raring to go for a house that I don't like, yeah. I guess. That's it's, a big one for us. I think we really value travel. So the same, right. We're taking a big trip to Italy in September and we're foregoing some other like small trips mm -hmm. for, because we know we're going to like go to Italy. And so it's just small stuff like that. I mean, in terms of like having a kid, I I think that we were in a financial situation where we could afford having Fritz yeah. and do the things we want. Um, but I mean, obviously he comes first. If at some point I have to make the decision of like sending him to school or <laughs> or having our nanny mm -hmm. and like doing that. I mean, I guess one of the biggest sacrifices that we do right now is that I work a weird schedule so that we don't have to have the nanny full time. We have her like sure, yeah. a part-time nanny, um, which for us like makes the most sense based on like what my work and Will's work is. But I work some really shitty long days to be able to have Wednesdays off to like spend with Fritz so that we also don't have to pay for a nanny. And me. Yeah, and so I can come record this podcast. Um, one that I was thinking of, and and I love the Fritz answer because that's obviously like when you think of what sacrifice do you make, it's like, okay, let's get the, we're going to basically buy a house. Like that's a huge one, obviously. And having a child is a huge one, obviously. Um, but what about having a dog, Sally? Because that's one in my mind that I have like imminently mm -hmm. and like I know that is going to change my life. Yeah. But I also think it's going to be for the better. I think, yeah, a lot of the sacrifices that we make, obviously the financial one is not having a house, but the other stuff I would say is like having a kid or having a dog, you sacrifice social things. Yep. Um, or like going on trips because you can't <clears throat> bring your dog or your kid. Um, having a dog is a... It's a it, beautiful disaster. It's, it? It, it can be really expensive. Because they fuck up shit for the first like year, they just eat everything yeah. like Rosie did. They're weird, like weirdly, their gallbladder is always in danger of exploding or something like that. So <laughs> you have to go to the you have to go to the vet and like that's twelve hundred bucks and um, she had a mushroom that we don't recognize. So let's go to get her stomach pumped for four fifty. Yeah, no, actually, Rosie <laughs> at this point just like eats whatever she wants and like we're just like eh, I hope you poop it out. <laughs> um, Good luck with that, Rose. She did get stung by a bee one time and her oh, face swelled or like one time. I mean, she did get bit by another dog. So there nice. are like unexpected expenses. Mm -hmm. 
But the bigger thing is like your friends want to go day drink all day and like you can't leave the dog in the creek yeah. for 12 hours. Mm -hmm. So you either have to go somewhere that you can bring your dog, which honestly is like I at the beginning we would do that with Rosie and then I'm like, I feel bad for her. Like she's just miserable. She wants to be mm -hmm. playing and not like sitting on a leash at a bar. <laughs> um, so you have to sacrifice like going to stuff because of your dog, especially when yeah. they're a puppy. But the other flip side is you have a great excuse to get out of shit. And Ooh, especially with the kid, okay. you're like, mm, can't find a babysitter. Yeah, so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, man. Can't like a it. dog, you, we would like use the dog as an excuse to go home, let her out. But like you can't get out of a whole thing because you, I mean, a dog can go in a crate. Yeah. A kid cannot. So if you're like, oh, no, hey, and no babysitter. Okay, can't. Babysitter canceled. <laughs> You can get out of it. It's weird. I have a text from Sally that says exactly that no. when I asked her to get a drink the other no, day. No, we That's were just... actually, I rarely use friends to get out of stuff because we're like so itching to get out. We... <laughs> just like, say no to begin I'm with. I'm like, can, does anybody, can I use your babysitter at the same time? We'll both go. <laughs> yeah. Um, one I have coming up is, and this is sort of like sacrificing social things. Like I am playing in a, a men's league mm -hmm. hockey this summer. And there, it's Thursday nights, oh, so I'm, yeah. I'm sacrificing like my Thursday happy hour, yeah, which is one of my favorite things in the world, to go play hockey because I want the I want one to be with the boys, and two like I miss competing. I miss yeah. like like legitimately competing against people. I, yeah. Like I I need that fire again. So I, I, that's a sacrifice I'm gonna make. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else, but like I love the skiing one. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm I'm gonna skip sushi a couple times a year so I can hop in that epic pass and yeah, get up to the mountains. When the mountains call, Sally, that's what they say, right? I mean, we all know. I must go. Skier. Let's be serious. Like, you gotta last get on the slopes, I Sally. Eight years ago, so you gotta get on the slopes. And it. And then the last time I was in a ski town, I tore my retina. So I think I think we're <laughs> remember that we're probably fine. Um. This is I like this question though. What sacrifices bring you the most joy? And and a lot of it is social or you know monetary, right? Like yeah, doing things that I really enjoy, which is living by myself and right having vaulted ceilings. Like that's the stuff I really makes me comfortable, makes me feel homey, and that's going to that that benefit obviously leads to a lesser something else. Working. So. 10 hour days in a really stressful environment mm -hmm. being on my feet is a good sacrifice to make to be with Fritz an extra day out of the week. Totally agree. And me and, and Adam and Brett. I'm doing it all for Brett. Thank you. Hey, Brett and Sal. Uh, I am getting, excuse me, I'm gr graduating undergrad in May and I have a job lined up after school. I was able to get June and July off and postpone my start date until August. Since this will be the last time I can get two months off for a good while, what in the world should I do with my time? I've considered picking up a chill part-time job, but I'm hesitant about working during this time. I love the pod. Thanks, guys. Two months of fun employment. If you can afford to not get a job, don't get a job. So, right. There's two, there's two prongs here. Yeah. There's one. It's like, oh, go backpack Switzerland or Ecuador. Yeah. Sounds super tight. Some people can. Some people can. I, I totally get it. Then there's my route, which I Ubered for two months. Okay. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, actually. It's non-taxed beer money. And then, like, that's how much you get. Like, I, I, had a, I had some, like, pull back the curtain. You have some weeks where you make, like, $750, and it yeah. just goes into your bank account. And I did it four days a week. Yeah. And for a college kid or just out of college waiting for my job to start and I made 400 or 750 bucks working like Monday, Thursday, Friday, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from like 7 a.m. to 3. And then it just direct deposits right in your, I was like, fuck, this is awesome. Yeah. Doing something like so that is easy. I think it's very much different Uber. That was 26, no, 2015, 2016. So I think it's different now. But yeah. Um, I don't hate picking up a, a chill part-time job if it's very flexible, it's very chill. Like I would love to um, bartend for a, for a summer. I would love to caddy for a summer or like assistant golf pro. If it's chill enough that you enjoy it 
Yeah. And you're not sacrificing your mental health, your like, you're like, fuck, I don't want to go to close down a bar Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right. That's obviously an issue, but I, I think there's still part-time jobs doing. out there. Yeah. That you can kind of build in because say that job starts up and you want to buy a new couch or you have to buy, move into an apartment. If you're in New York, you better have first month, last month security and renter's fee or finder's fee. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you're like, oh shit, that two grand apartment a month just became eight grand the first month. Um, if you're going to get a part-time job and you don't want to do it in your town because you don't want to like work like a part-time desk job or something, go like to some resort town and like do something kind of like random I, and bougie. You know how much I want to, like I, I've said this before on this podcast, if I had all the money in the world, I would move to a ski town, buy a condo and ski all day and bartend at night. Yeah. Or you could like just meet people. Will's friend like worked on a boat for like, all summer, work on like a boat. outside on a boat. It's pretty referee. Uh, just go work at a tiki bar, pour margaritas for Sally and her friends at bachelorette parties. Like, <laughs> go to Cabo, or if you can afford it, go go travel. Go travel. I I was such a naive, stupid idiot in college. I was like, man, I love like I'm just gonna be in like cities. Like I love Boston and New York yeah. and Toronto and L. A. I was like, I don't want to do any. I don't want to go to Switzerland. I don't want to go to Norway. Yeah. The only place I don't want to go is Southeast Asia. I don't like enough of the food. Really? And it's humid as fuck. I I had um, I had two months off between finishing grad school and starting my job. Yeah, two months. Mm -hmm. And it flew by so fast. I wish I would have done something with my time. But I we were planning the wedding I and mean, we traveled for like 10 of those days and yeah. then we did Breck. Mm -hmm. But I mean, <laughs> it went by so fast and I look back at that now. I'm like, I will never have that again. Yeah. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. You have two months off. That's not like, and also don't feel or bad if you leave. just do nothing, which is exactly what I did. <laughs> yeah. Do no that's, and that's it was great. You're totally right. You're totally right. Maybe mix in, you know, we talked about this earlier, like a visit to old friends. Yeah. Mix in a, a visit at, at home. For pick up tennis, you could pick up tennis, maybe pickleball if you're invested in something like that. Yeah, go home and spend time with your mom and dad. Do like a Wednesday through Monday at home because you, you can only do that at Thanksgiving and Christmas out yeah. here on out. Like, there's a lot of things, and maybe, maybe what we're telling this person to do is like make a priorities list. Like, what, yeah. do, you, what do you want to prioritize? Is it seeing old friends and family? Is it travel? Is it making money is it spending money is it like what is important to you because this is two months that you're never going to have the same set of skills or responsibilities ever again yeah like maternity leave eight weeks guess what you have a newborn yeah um, mine was 12 weeks and only four of it was paid and uh <laughs> It's yeah. not a vacation. No, no, it sure not. isn't. Sure isn't. So I kept thinking that I was going to have the summer off. Isn't it weird have how the summer off? Okay, we <laughs> we program like we program our bodies growing up like September or if you're in Texas like August through May and and in my case September through June, you're like programmed to be in work mode. Yeah, and then you're programmed to be off for three months: June, July, August, or July, August, and, and then we it. then it just changes. Yeah, it's weird, man. I don't know. There's some there's some psychological thing about that that's Would like love like a Christmas break. That'd be tight. oh man, my friend, my friends. I guess they had trimesters, mm -hmm. so they would have their week before Thanksgiving would be finals week, uh -huh. and they would go back like January thirteenth. I was like, oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, it's my favorite time of the year, Christmas. Yeah, so six weeks, and then they would have the same thing. It would be like. May would be finals and then they'd go back mid July or whatever, but that like you'd have built in summer. Yeah. It was awesome. Love the trimester situation. Uh so let us know what you do. Please. I'd like to know what kind of job you pick up or where do you go or if you sit on your couch and play or Fortnite. If you binge TV. <laughs> Who cares? Sally DeFreeze method. Hey Brett and Sally. I graduate from grad school in May. I get married in June, and then we're moving to Austin on July 1st. Shouts. It's not going to be cold. Uh, this is a 
first time move after graduation for both of us, and I'm losing my mind. I feel faced with so much change and so many decisions, like apartment hunting, honeymoon planning, leaving the state I've lived in my whole life. Do y'all have any advice? He's already a y'all guy or girl. Do y'all have any advice for the spiral that seems like it never ends? Listen up, Adam. Also, how the heck am I supposed to change my name when I'm moving states and starting a career that I will be legally licensed in with my maiden name? That's a question for Sally DeFree. So this is a girl, I presume, mm -hmm. and they're moving to Austin. How do you handle that spiral of I have so many decisions to make my life has just absolutely been turned upside down and we're moving to Austin. Um, slow down. Grab the wall. <laughs> Take a breath. Adam, Adam, my man, he liked that one. I just chose not to acknowledge it. Uh, <laughs> okay, first of all, with changing your name, I made this mistake. I got married before I started my job. Okay. But I didn't change my name in time. Ooh. It couldn't. I wouldn't have had time. I mean, COVID hit right after we got married and okay. I started my job like a week later. Got it. So if you have time, all you have to do is change your social security card. So like okay. all that is required for a social security card is your marriage license. So if you can change your social security card, then technically you can change your name before you start your job. Okay. Um, even if she has like her, say it's a nursing license. Yes. Okay. So I was licensed in every, I, that was, but again, that was sexist of me. Say it's a CEO. Right. License. Okay. <laughs> her yeah. medical degree. Yeah. Her medical, degree. her medical license. Uh, but again, if you don't do it before you start, that's also fine. People change their names all the time. It has taken me, it took me about a year to do everything and I still haven't changed a couple of my credit cards because I am too lazy to call. Um, a lot of licensing agencies, at least for nursing and uh, nurse anesthetist, like you just submit a form that shows your new social security card okay. and they change it for you. Oh, cool. So it's not as daunting as it may seem on right. the surface. And usually your HR person or whoever you're going to go work for, you can be like, how do I start this process mm -hmm. if you can do it before great but if you can't let that that doesn't matter so truly like no yeah. one cares mm -hmm. i've had friends who like didn't change their name for years or ever but like i had friends who never changed their name and like personally went by whatever new last name and mm -hmm. professionally went by whatever old last name because they didn't want to deal okay. with it yeah yeah and that's totally fine you can change all your social media to your last name. And guess what? Instagram's not going to ask for a marriage license. So mm -hmm. do what you want. Uh, so if you want to try to get on top of that before, all you have to have is a social security card. If you don't, I would suggest waiting and take your time. Okay. Um, the only thing with the name change that actually matters is when you change your passport, you have to change your stuff on your flight. So if you are flying and your name yep, you is your be. maiden name, mm -hmm. you have to have your maiden name on whatever your ID is. You can't yep. have a different name. So your name has to match what your ID says. Yep. So for a while, I actually had my ID, had my new name, and my passport had my old name. So whenever Ooh. we booked flights internationally, I just had to book under my old name. Gotcha. Which is fine. Just make sure it matches whatever you're going to use. Mm -hmm. um, okay. How about the downward... Uh Downward the down, spiral. Not necessarily the downward spiral, but just the spiral of life. That I think everyone feels this way when change is coming. Like, I am mm -hmm. very averse to change and then I'm glad that it's happening afterwards. But, like, every time we move, I get really anxious, upset. Even at, like, when we moved and I hated our old apartment, I was like, I don't want to leave. Like, we have memories here. And uh huh. We went through the freeze together and almost died here <laughs> and like, you know, just dumb shit Yeah, that like you feel like I'm just so scared and I don't want to do this. And sometimes you just have to rip the bandaid off, right? Like you just have to do it. And it, there was so much, like, I think for Will, Will and I are both like this. Like we just sit there and stew on it for days mm -hmm. and it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. So like you can't let your... You have to 
create coping mechanisms so that whenever you get into a downward spiral of freaking out about the future, you have to be able to stop yourself yeah. from doing it. So Pull the ripcord. How do you pull a ripcord, Sally? I think one of the best things you can do for a coping mechanism is learn how to like deep breathe, meditate, et cetera. I'm meditating helps with that. But like for me, it was always like if I start down this road of anxiety and worrying, I have to stop myself like consciously and be like, okay, you're going to take 10 deep breaths. And there's like apps that you can follow or like my watch had the thing where you're like, breathe. It also helps if you have somebody to keep you accountable. So whether it's your partner or your mom who you're calling and freaking out to, or your friend, when they, they're like, tell them before you freak out, like, Hey, when I call you freaking out, I need you to stop me and mm -hmm. tell me to take some deep breaths and to like calm down mm -hmm. and don't on the flip side, call the person that's going to carry into that. Like maybe your mom, like maybe your mom is making you freak out more because she's like kind of being a bitch about the wedding and like also not thrilled that you're like leaving your hometown. Uh, yes. So like maybe she's making it worse. So like calling her and crying about the fact that you don't want to leave is like not helpful because she's only going to feed into it. <laughs> wow, they got oddly specific. No, no, no. I'm just saying like everyone has that one person in their life that you're like the person who will calm them down and the person who like maybe – is making it worse. So yes. it's not better to like let them feed into the hysteria. Mm -hmm. I would say on my end, I've always liked this phrase. I think it's proprietary. So I'm going to coin it now. Radical change begets radical change. And what that means is that when you are going through a period of change, especially a large period of change where your marriage, new place, new city, leaving your state, it's going to change you inherently. Yeah. It, it has to. And my point there is make it a good thing. Be yeah. excited for that because you are never going to be the same person in your life for all however many years you got. And if I stopped growing emotionally and socially and maturity wise at 23 or at 19 or 21 or 25, I would be a different person. Right. And I am just... I'm happy about the experiences that I've had that have made me who I am. That being said, I'm, I'm always afraid of change, but that's why I've, I've kind of always stuck to this phrase, and it would be a tattoo that I'd get. And it would be the, remember the radical symbol in math? Mm -hmm. And the delta symbol, which stands for change? It'd basically be a radical symbol with a delta kind of underneath it. And just remember that radical change is beginning radical change, and that is 99% of the time for me been a good thing yeah and so now i welcome it now i i don't seek it necessarily but i welcome it i embrace yeah. it i learn how to cope with it and for me like you said deep breaths and meditation me, mine is like list making mm -hmm. okay so if i have to tackle this problem and like anxiety is a little different because i worry about things versus having like a uh like a work spiral or, or something like i have so much to do i have this house to try to afford or this apartment that I want to visit or something like that or like a wedding to plan, et cetera, where I would list make versus worrying about like a parent's health is different for me from a coping mechanism standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think it's just something to do with embracing that change and, and knowing that it's going to come and time is the one constant in life. And these things may feel all at once. They may feel immense. They may feel um, discouraging even. Like you're you're literally getting out of what's been comfortable your whole life. But but make it fun. Yeah. Make, embrace that. Find a new spot in Austin that you guys can get in routine in. And I find that routine is is the uh, a friend to change. So when you get here, you're in New York. You're you now now married. You have your new job. You're in a new place. Find something that that feels comfortable. And once out, and out of that comfort, you can build sort of your new your new personality, your new person, your Austin person. Mm -hmm. Y'all, howdy. My other uh, practical advice here is um, that this there is a chance 
that moving to a new city, to a new place, starting a new job with your now new husband mm-hmm. um, can lead to some very stressful situations. And it's great because you have a partner with you who can like kind of go through that with you. But marriage is um, hard and even the most healthy marriages normally the first year of marriage can be a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, especially with all of those other variables added in. So personally, I think being proactive and finding a marriage counselor that you can kind of, anyway, marriage is really hard and it, with all of these factors added in, it can make what is already a difficult transition for some people even more difficult. So I think probably the healthiest thing that Will and I ever did, which we said like a week or two ago was get a marriage counselor um, or a couples therapist and talk about it now, make a game plan for like, what, like speak openly about what your worries and anxieties are. Mm-hmm what you're excited about, all of those things with your partner, with maybe like an objective third party. And then thankfully like our counselor is, we do everything via Zoom now. Mm -hmm. So it's really easy. Like even if we move, we would probably still be able to like see her. Nice. Um, And if you're moving to Austin and you want her information, I can give it to you. Um, But I, somebody who, when you move here and you're, hit a snafu and you're dealing with something that you can go to that can like help you communicate better. Cause I think that that is really the biggest issue that people have. I'm not a marriage expert at all, but I think that part of the reason that people have trouble in the first year of marriage is because they like fail to communicate with Mm -hmm. each other. So don't let all of the list of things about that you're about to embark on be the reason why you like you already are anxious you already are like stressed out about doing all of these things graduating planning a wedding starting a new job so let your partner be there to help you and be your partner and not be a hindrance Mm -hmm. i love it i would also last point on this would be compartmentalize if you can don't look at these giant changes as one look at them as individual sort of buckets yeah, to focus on one at a time. So don't let the pressure of planning a wedding or a honeymoon uh, it combine with the pressure of a new career and your nervousness about changing your name and, and that combined with the apartment that you have to go see and to, <clears throat> excuse me, don't let that happen. Easier said than done, obviously, but compartmentalization will help in that situation. Yeah. We got one more, Sally. I would like for you to read this one, if that's okay. Okay. Do you have it on your phone, or do you want? I have my computer. No, I can read it. Okay. Okay. Hey, Brett and Sally, love the pod and have been a listener since the mailbag days. I'm getting married in October of this year and have my bachelor party scheduled for August of this year in Saratoga Springs. Topical. Let's go. I have a group of 15 guys, and we're staying in a place 10 minutes outside the city. My question for you is, what would you recommend doing in the area? Thanks in advance. Bye. I'm going to sit this one out. Great question, my friend. I don't know what you think about Saratoga Springs. So It is the, uh, I am biased, but I, in my opinion, it is the better of the two springs where people hail from in this company, just saying. Harbor versus Saratoga. Wow. Shots fired. Yeah, shots okay. fired. August in Saratoga Springs, what a lovely time of year. Because one, the weather, it's like 85, maybe 90. Pretty manageable humidity. And the horses are running. So you are going at the perfect time of year. You have to go when the ponies are, are racing. And you're staying 10 minutes outside of the city, which is totally fine. There's plenty of Ubers, plenty of lifts, et cetera. Um, my favorite things to do are the horse races, downtown Saratoga for dinner slash drinks slash late nights. There's a bar district called Caroline Street, which is more or less like a bourbon street style. There's bars every five feet, it feels like. Um, So that's where you'll spend a lot of your nights and get dinner uh, in and around the city, whether it's a uh, Druthers, uh, which is a brew pub, 
whether it's Chianti, which is Italian, Salivo, Italian, um, Salt and Char, Steakhouse vibes, Morrissey's, an old school bistro, kind of French with a um, old school, old Saratoga kick to it, and a speakeasy if you can find it. Um, as far as things outside of food, and you're, you're going to be downtown for food and drink and um, that kind of thing. For the track, the racetrack, you're going to go to the track. You're going to go afterwards to the Horseshoe, which is an open-air sort of tented bar situation. Uh, if you're familiar with Bordy Barn in Long Island, it's similar in uh, debauchery. It's, it's quite the scene. Very, very fun, though. Um, other things. Go golf. Saratoga Spa Course is great. Saratoga National is expensive. Um, probably not worth it for a bachelor party with a bunch of dudes, like 15. Um, but if you want to get on, fine. I would go Saratoga Lake Golf Club or Saratoga Spa Golf Course. If you have uh, some transportation, I would get out to the lake. Maybe rent a boat, which is about 10 minutes from downtown as well. Saratoga Lake. Uh, a lot of fun, whether it's tubing, you know, hanging out, especially in the mornings or mid-afternoon before you go to the track. And there's a restaurant called, I think it's called 530 Waterfront, 503 Waterfront, something like that. It used to be called Lake Local. That burned down uh, in a fairly suspicious way, Sally. Mm -hmm. There might have been some fraud involved there. Little, little interesting, just interesting circumstances. Interesting circumstances because the owners built a brand new facility that's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, with like... All the, the insurance money. Yeah. yeah, I got it. Uh, so go to there. I think it's 580, 530, something waterfront. Um, really, really cool scene. Um, right on the water. You can boat in if you want. You can drive in. Um, let's see. What else? So golf. I covered, I covered golf. I covered racetrack. I covered downtown. I covered the lake. And then, like, if you want to hike, sure. If you want to bike, fine. I'm not usually that. Where do you fly into for Saratoga Springs, Buffalo? You fly into Albany. Albany, which is about a thirty-minute no thirty-minute drive from Albany, or you can fly into Saratoga, uh, the local airport, if you're oh. flying Pry. It, it is a jet. It, I was going to say jettable. I don't think that's a word, but jets can fly into it. Okay, and they frequently do during track season. Uh, other advice would be get a reservation like today, because during track season, especially in August, especially because the two races of the biggest races of the year are, are in August. Uh, hard to get a table. Oh, 15 Church, another great one. Um, yeah, I think that covers a lot of it. Golf, track, downtown, slash brunch, slash lunch, whatever you want to do. There's a lot of really, really fun things. And check out the, the concerts in the area at the time. Go to SPAC, which is a like an outdoor, indoor-outdoor amphitheater performing arts venue. Um, and August is always a great time of year for concerts. So you can mix one of those in if you would like and just have a blast. I mean, it's my favorite place in the world. So you're going to enjoy it. And I didn't, I didn't really realize I lived in a vacation town until I went to college and everybody's like, Oh, I don't want to go home for this or that or the summer. I was like, Oh, I can't wait to go home. See all the boys. That's my Saratoga minute, Adam. Wow. And Sally. I feel ready to go to Saratoga. You're basically there. Basically, I could feel like I'm on Caroline Street. You're you're basically on Caroline Street, yeah. Yeah, wow. and Broadway's beautiful. Go shopping too on Broadway. A lot of cool uh, local town shops. But uh, that's gonna do it, Sally, for the mail-in. Do you uh, have any additional thoughts that you want to get off your chest? Mm -mm. Just drinking my water. Just drinking water it's over so there. I'm good to stay too. <laughs> it really, it really is. Guys, give us a subscription on iTunes, please. Rate five stars, maybe a review, tell a friend about the pod, hit the hotline number to leave a question or a voicemail, 888-362-MAIL. That's 888-362-6245, or you can write in at the link in the Twitter bio, at Mail in Podcast. Sally, where can the people find you? Sally DeFreeze on Instagram and Twitter. I am Schmerman on both of those as well. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.